and welcome back to episode 17 of Rule the Waves 2 German Brawlers. The astute of you will have noticed already, we are now operating in version 1.03. They'd fixed a bunch of bugs, including uh, the AI nations will now build more battleships in the initial fleet on the 1900 start, which we saw that one for sure. And a few other small additions like uh, light cruisers are allowed to be 12,000 tons from 1940 on. Uh, a couple other uh, random ones, but it was mostly bug fixing. But with that, we'll get back into it. And uh, looking through, somebody had pointed out that our, our Corvettes here I'd forgotten at the time, but minesweeping gear plus increased uh, or ASW warfare added in. Those two together, when you have both on the same ship, they do both less well. At about 50%, I think is what they quoted. I haven't double checked it yet, but I trust that, that if I go and look, that'll be what it is. So we may redesign this class and um, design a new class. Or actually, we'll probably just keep it the same and we'll uncheck one for one and uncheck the other for the other. And we'll have two different versions of the Polar Stern. But that can wait. <laughs> right now we're at war. Um, but thank you for that comment, Abaddon. I think we're going to look... Um, if I remember correctly, we had moved a bunch of ships into the Mediterranean because the French were not garrisoning it. We have our set invasion on Tunisia. And we still have, are maintaining a lot of our modern stuff up here in Northern Europe. And our raiders are not doing much yet. But part of that is we don't have a ton of them. I, I don't think I'm... I don't think there's anything else I'm forgetting to do yet, so we'll go ahead and move forward. Yeah, let's... We'll copy our... Air Squadrons. Secondary turrets on BBs. Yeah, no merchants this turn. I don't know if that's because they had switched a bunch of their ships to trade protection and turns where we actually get a significant chunk, they have turned them off. And we get some uh, more help from the British. They're being extremely helpful. Hmm, that's useful. Let's see, we have our three battleships and one from the British. Those to support. It is late in the day though, so we will want to set them to screen at some point. They're set to support as well. We have missed them. I think we will head south. I think we're completely going to miss each other. No, I should have kept going. Oh well. That would have been a good battle to make up some points. With that, we'll check French fleet projection. Looking all right. Sure, absolutely. I would like the prestige. I'd like to drive up the, uh, the end game point value, even though it's completely meaningless. Dual purpose for three and four inch guns. 
secondary guns and turrets on dreadnoughts now. Reduce dud rate. Light anti-aircraft increase. Sunken AMC, which we haven't built any of those, but we're kind of rebuilding our entire fleet right now. Small engagement. Probably me won't be using a light cruiser or a heavy cruiser, and they'll be using that battle cruiser. Or they'll get denied. Which I think uh, Rule the Waves 2 does a better job of making that a little less lopsided than Rule the Waves 1. Yep. Backfired somewhat, but I think our unrest level will continue to be just fine. Oh, absolutely. I will pay for all the technology you will give me. I think that brings the uh, malice down to 20% from 40. Ooh, new flying boat. Let's see, we have... This will be the longest range one. Toughness is fairly comparable. Maneuverability is low. It's a flying boat, as to be expected. Ranges all around are pretty good. Bomb mode is the heaviest we've seen of any of them. Cruise speed is better. Max speed is better. Yeah, that's... The Heinchel makes a good one. Gee. Losing so many of the Corvettes. Convoy attack. Absolutely, please. Well, I'll take that for three victory points any day. Uh, we've got our aircraft. We haven't evaluated the new flying boat yet. We have the two Heinkel and the Heinkel. Float planes. Torpedo bombers, low reliability, so I think we're going to see if we can get a better one. Go with reliability and range. Absolutely. 20 inch guns in 1920. Wow. Developed an improved model. Yep. Significant improvement on range. That might actually be better than the new one. It's just slower. Eat. Three BPs from our ally. Post raid. Oof. Hopefully we can get some sort support from Britain, which that's a no. Sixteen thousand points. Was it just the blue shirt? This ought to be interesting. Oh. Between Saint Nazaire and La Rochelle, it's morning. Turn on the visibility. Oh no, that's radar range. That's the visibility ring. Hmm. Some kind of light ship. Says it's a transport. And it appears to be so. I'm down in speed. Blue sure the really old one? Yeah. It's alright. Uh, she'll take care of that merchant fairly easily. I mean, what ship doesn't? I'm just sure would. Keep going. Nothing to see here. Ooh, look. An enemy fleet. Looks like a screen formation, some scouts. 
or those light cruisers are really fast and their screen can't quite keep up. All right, what do we got? We got a four and a half inch belt, the slightly armored heavy cruiser. They've got six inch guns. What are our six inch guns to do? Yeah, so we want to keep them a little bit at range. Which will be fine because it's not like we're going to go into very, very close range with the threat of torpedoes. Maneuver around a little bit. Oh yeah, that would be helpful if I actually brought us up to speed. Pretty sure they'll be going faster than we will. Yeah, pretty significantly. These uh, Victoria Luises are getting very long in the tooth. They're very old ships. They collide? And the one got back underway? Kind of trying to split in between them. Because these ones will probably turn back in. Unless they think they can take it, take the blue sure. But I want to make sure I sink at least one, possibly both of these destroyers. And the destroyer's moving around some. I don't mind the blue sure focusing on the cruisers for now. Goes into the from A. Yeah, multiple hits. That's what I suspected. Get some more rounds into them. They're probably done. There they are again. Close in and start pounding that four inch battery. If I go this way, there is a risk of mines out here, especially with the battery there. But I believe the battery cannot actually fire back because it's not a battery in turrets, it's the battery and adds a limited arc of fire. So we can actually stay out of that arc, especially with the way this um, peninsula sticks out. And taking out the battery will be good. One less bit of support for them. Wondering if we'll switch targets. Looks like no. Started a fire in the battery. Turn around. Six inch. Oh, and the noise are coming around. So we'll actually come to a broadside. Oh, oh, that's not a good torpedo solution. That might be. Or, well, we're not going to get a good torpedo solution with them grinding against the, the landscape. Oh, a conning tower hit. Brutal. We've reestablished control in the battle bridge or combat information center or any number of other names countries have called the the interior bridge away from the vulnerability of getting hit way up in the conning tower. And we've taken a few hits.
Still trying to take out this 4 inch battery. While finding these two Lenoys. Pretty straightforward battle. Just being careful enough to not let anything major happen to the blucher. Luckily, having sunk two ships, we are... There's a 9-inch hit. We have... Mm, I do not like this. We have an advantage in points. There's another 9-inch hit. 16,000 points is significant. I don't think it'll quite make up for the blucher if we lose her. So I'm not inclined to lose her. Hmm, that's really tempting. Coming out far enough, uh, I kind of want to cut between them and the port. That means I'm going to pass in front of the 4-inch battery. At close enough range, 4-inch battery may be able to penetrate. But the 4-inch battery should be pretty chewed up at this point. Two guns knocked out, one disabled. Yeah, they're firing one light gun. And it bounced on the uh, belt extended. What are we doing on ammo? 32% left. Secondary is actually almost out. Tertiaries already are. Almost down to just primaries. More in the forward magazine or the aft magazine? Aft magazine, of course. Another hit on one of the Lenoys. I unfortunately don't think I have the ammo left to take out the 4-inch battery. Like, I could get a lucky hit. Don't know. That and chips are more important. In general. 6-inch hit. Continue to pursue. Are we out on the forward? Are they just not firing at the forward gun? No, it's traversing. Okay. And... Okay, hit. A little bit nervous about torpedoes. It's a bit of a sharp angle. I'm not that worried about it, but... Enough that I just don't want to risk it. That sort of angle I am. I think we've ceased fire. I guess the gunners were waiting to get in close enough. Take our pass. Ooh, that's an angle I don't like. All right, get the rear battery involved. Couple hits. Couple hits. Nice steady stream of shells into the eastern Illinois. But I don't think. No, it doesn't look like we're going to get it. Going faster than they are. A little unusual. I'm in dangerously close. to the broadside. I 
There's the hit. Another one. Took a medium gun in return. Avoiding torpedoes. They have air mounted ones? Feels like such an odd angle. We are almost devoid of ammunition. Just the rear battery. Tertiary guns are completely empty, so are secondary. All we have is 170 ish rounds for the rear turret. And night is falling. Down in speed. And we sight it. There it is. They keep it sighted. And all those destroyers come back and make me regret doing this. We're going slow so we can get some some hits in on it. But the rear battery is not engaging. Because AP rounds. Hmm. Alright. Alright, it's time to call it quits then. Coming tower hit. Yeah, it's a 4 inch battery. It's not doing that much. Head out to sea and run out the clock. A little bit of a waste spending that much time uh, chasing those light cruisers and trying to take out that battery. Could have paid off though. Could have also hurt us. Oh, nice. Got an extra merchant out of it. So, yeah, that's a tidy amount. Got one prestige, Battle of Rochebone. Roche I'm probably massacring. Let's see, where's that put us? Surprisingly, Britain does not have a lot of ships up in Northern Europe. French have an AMC down there. I'm going to need to pause something. Stop the Ariadnes for until the Graf Spees get out. Another Ariadne. I don't think so. We have a backlog of things I want to do with the budget. I want to fight it out. I think we we have a. We have better ships. We just need to get them finished refitting and get them back out. Yeah, I don't mind pissing off the Italians since they gave up on the security arrangement. Our new flying boat ready for service. French with a little bit of an advantage in the trade war. Convoy attack. 680 victory points. There's the Seedlitz and the Crafts Bay. Oh, nice. 83 nautical miles. Russia. Production and merchant losses. New bomber, torpedo bombers. All right. Most all of them are faster. None of them have the range of our current one. Theoretically, they are more reliable. Let's see. Tougher and more maneuverable as the longest range out of the ones that we have, but it'll be shorter range than the Arado. Decent cruise speed. Yeah, we'll go with that one. 
Okay, we got another AMC. All of our raiders in the dockyard now. Sunk by a mine. And yeah, they they win that round of trade war. Raid on enemy shipping. Oof, that's a little rough. Get some support from our allies, though. The Eadlets and the Graf Spey right on top of each other? Is that what that is? Come on, guys, get back in line with the Battle Division. Actually, the Irresistible should be. You guys should get behind. The British division it is noon. I'm going to want our destroyers on support, not screen. This will be our scout. And we have already spotted the opposing division, so let's get the scout behind the battle cruisers. All right. Come up in speed and turn towards. Got some range away from their sh aircraft. So that shouldn't be too much for concern. That looks to be rather slow. That's not a destroyer. That's. It is. How is it going slow? Possibly scouting force. I think it's a little early to have destroyers being able to be used as a scouting force. 14 inch. You can only imagine what that's like hitting a 700 ton destroyer. Like I've read accounts of the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Task Force uh, Taffy, I think it was. And the destroyer escorts taking... Uh, I think it was... I can't remember whether it was the Yamato or the Musashi involved in that. 18 inch shells, armor piercing, it was going straight through the, the destroyers until the Japanese realized that those were not cruisers they were shooting at. Speaking of which, if you have an interest in that time period or naval action that's bit lopsided like that and kind of the fog of war and some of the personal accounts of how how crazy some of that would have been I can recommend a book that I believe is called the tin can sailors don't know the law for the author offhand if you're if anyone's interested please leave me a comment at the end of the video I will be happy enough to go look that up find it and let you know oh geez that poor destroyer Yeah, while I was talking, it was just 14 inch. Apologies, I lost the recording at some point. Um, stuff was popping up, I had to correct some things, and so missed out on some of the dialogue of the battle. Catch up, presumably from where I think I lost the recording. We were north of Dunkirk. We kept seeing that these batteries were being attacked. We came over here, attacked this small merchant, and... Um, as the French fleet finished up bombarding this battery and headed out towards us, we came in and did a close pass 4,000 yards with playing a game of chicken with the French battle cruisers head to head. Both turned away, no torpedoes. Absolute, I could not keep up with the, the battle log. There was that much. There's just so much gunfire, most of it coming from us at their battle cruisers. Battle cruisers are pretty chewed up at this point. Uh, their Gaidon is reporting medium damage, turret down. One of the Rones has a turret down, medium damage. Second Rone is down to a single turret. And their line is actually doing alright, and that's the dangerous one with 15 inch 
um, guns. And those 15 inchers have been poking out the worth hurts just because the range is short enough that they can go they can go through the 14 inch face. Well, the worth is actually taking a bit of a beating. So we'll split her off at some point. But uh, you can see that that German damage control is really doing a lot for us. Uh, other than that, we see the Marengo with the 16 inch guns, also very dangerous. And uh, this is where we're, we're at. We still have the battle line in the arrangement we had it before. Marengo taking a couple five inch hits. Another one, I'm kind of worried about this Claymore. Which is now making an attack run. Worth taking a heavy hit. Bounces. Helgeland taking a four and a half hit. Medium gun. There's the torpedo launch. We'll come back the other way. Worth takes two heavy hits from the lion. Like I said, they're the one that's dangerous. Not getting a lot of heavy hits in right now. Ogoland takes a torpedo. How bad? Pretty significant. And it depends on how quickly the damage control teams can control that. And her speed is significantly impacted. I should get turning in a circle. Yeah, the hell land's hurting. Already detached. We're going to detach the worth as well. I think it's about time. Got a hit on the Marengo. The Irresistible. Our British battlecruiser. Hell land takes a secondary battery hit. Alright, we're getting uh we're starting to get heavy hits in again. A better view of what's going on. Utter chaos at this point. Get broadside. Ronchwig, belt hit. Marengo takes a hit. Three more hits on the Marengo. What I'm looking for. No, four. In two different ships. Marengo takes three more hits. We can keep this up. Oh yeah, five more hits. Yeah, we started to knock out turrets. That uh, it that was a good good set of hits in there. Marengo taking three more. Two more. Thinking of rearranging the battle line. Let's bring you guys up into the battle division. We'll move the. Oh no, that's the Helgeland. There's the irresistible. Want to move her to independent. Or her behind the blue shirt. Let the British do their thing. Well, no, I actually don't trust them to do their thing. We'll just tell her to get in line behind the blueshire. So she'll be our heavy support in the rear. The British uh, dreadnoughts are set up more for handling long range combat anyways. So where do they have for ports? La Havre. I want to turn in. Rango is capable of 21 knots. There's a Claymore coming in. Stay broadside then. Steady on. Let's see if they can get... Oh, you just made her turn. Supposedly there's a seaplane carrier in here. Oh, no, there is one. There's two. Got a hidden on the Marengo. Our 
battle line is equally crazy now. What are they doing? They're doing 28 knots. No, I don't want the great... I want you to come in with the Braunschweig. And the Irresistible behind the Blucher. The Blucher. Oops, that one. Blucher be behind the Seedlitz. They're kind of circling each other. I had them daisy chained on accident. That should bring the our battle cruisers in behind the Braunschweig. I may pull back a bit to allow that to occur. Oh, and night is falling. This this will get ugly. All right, let's bring you guys up into a screen. Same with you. And same with you. We'll at least chase down without being able to spot the further targets. We'll definitely take out this seaplane carrier. Green is forming. What's the hell the land doing? All right, as long as she can get that down into single digits, that'll be good. Where's our other one? Worth is already well on her way. Yeah, she'll be fine. Significant hits on the Seaplane carrier. I don't have to continue to maneuver. This is very dangerous for our dreadnought. And we want to have taken out those Lenoys last battle, or last month. Yes, yes. The Villa de Strasbourg is done. Leave it alone. And now the destroyers are launching torpedoes at it. He's dead, Jim. Move on. What do we have here? Voss is Das. Slow moving Claymore. Let the port batteries take those out. While the starboard engages what is probably the other seaplane carrier, maybe. Oh no, it's reporting as a transport. Nope, oh, yep, that is the other seaplane carrier. No seaplanes for the French. Get a torpedo in there. Reduce speed. And let the formation reform. Until then, of course. Oh, that's bad for torpedoes. They're going northeast. And we are truly in knife fighting range now. I see avoiding torpedoes in there. A couple heavy rounds in. A more. Maneuvering rather rapidly for a light cruiser. They are pretty squirrely though. Let's see if we can get too close. Oh, for a second I thought that was us. I'm, this is the least optimal position for a capital ship encountering a light craft with uh, torpedoes on it. But she isn't able to get a solution, and we're able to get into point blank range and absolutely destroy her. Seedlitz takes a torpedo. 
One's enough for me. Where is our battle cruiser division? That does give two pips. That's enough to detach her. Why would you detach? Well, because there's a light cruiser right there. I get it. I'm only hit by a torpedo. As all of our destroyers avoid our own torpedoes. And down in speed again. And see about passing time. Yes, the Lenoy is dead. Sinking. I guarantee it. Okay, good. Seedlitz will make it. Try to escort her since she's headed the wrong way. Whatever that ship was. Alright, see about that close escort. We're going a little bit long, but I'm not really intending to go too much longer with this battle if we can avoid it. There we go. We have an unknown ship here. Not maneuvering particularly. Oh, oh, it's maneuvering just fine. And it's a merchant. It's done. Alright, come back down to 18 knots. And again, kind of escort the seedlets. into our line of breast formation. Look for further targets. I don't think we're, I think we're gonna run out the clock. Seedlet's going to Harwich. Yeah, that's not bad. It'll be fine. See if we can't see anybody else. Two in the morning. I don't think we're going to encounter anything more. It won't be for lack of trying. That seems to be going slow, so I'm guessing it's a merchant. Turns well. Says it's a destroyer. Why would you launch a torpedo at that? And it was a Corvette. Okay, accelerate time again. Night time, so I don't really care about the torpedo bombers. So we'll, we'll go along into the English Channel. Although daytime should be soon. Oh, another target. Seems to be going slow. I'm guessing it's a uh, transport. Ooh, very maneuverable. Could be a Corvette. Nope, that's a medium merchant. And there goes that one. And we'll head out and we should end any minute now. So we were unable to get any of the capital ships. We took significant damage, but so did they. And we cleared out eh, two escorts and a number of merchants. Could have been better. Could have been worse. I'm, I'm going to say I'm pleased with that result. Actually, how many were there? Yeah, we got a lot more hits in. Did a lot more damage. And that'll be two prestige. Nice. The Kaiser agrees. Battle of the English Channel. That I'm going to save and call this episode to close. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for staying till the very end. Please leave a comment below, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Take care.